Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will not be joined by my illustrious gorilla companion Harambe. He is currently not feeling so well, so he's gonna skip out on this video. So it has come to my attention that a certain documentary was posted on Netflix called Unknown Cave of Bones, and I decided to give it a watch. And now I feel like I need to make a video reacting and reviewing the documentary, including some important facts. If you haven't seen the documentary, it's basically about a famous paleoanthropologist by the name of Lee Burger, the rising star cave system in South Africa, their discovery of a bunch of these fossils of a supposed homo naledi, and what these fossils and this site means for our evolution. Now in the documentary there's some really good storytelling and some really interesting animations but also not a lot of scientific evidence in my opinion. I'm gonna get into all my thoughts about this documentary later but I just want to be clear that the main reason I'm making this video is that I don't want people to watch this documentary and get the wrong idea idea about homo naledi and about our evolution, which is unfortunately already happening if you look at the comments of the Netflix trailer for this documentary and many of the general public's reactions to this documentary on Twitter or other social medias. Let's not forget that most of these teams' discoveries have uh, not fully been vetted through the peer review process, and honestly, looking at some of these peer reviews is going to make you question a lot of the evidence they have for their claims. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. So let's talk about what I liked about the documentary. So one thing that I actually really support that the scientists did is that Berger and his team decided to make all the fossils open access. They're available on this uh, site called morphosource.com. And I think this is a great idea because I think the times where we gatekeep fossils and who gets access to them is long over. I think it's very counterintuitive to science. I don't think it's very fair to people who are trying to break in the field. I don't think it's fair to people who just want to be able to look at the fossils. And I feel like for science to be science, everyone should have access to this material so that they can all independently work and come together with their findings about the fossil material. So I really commend uh, Berger and his team for making these fossils an access. I also want to note that there seems to be a diverse team of excavators that are, you know, excavating the Rising Star Cave system, which I think is really awesome. And I also noticed that it seems like Berger is hiring local South Africans to also excavate the cave as well, which is really great. I it's really great to see field work that highlights not only these, you know, outside anthropologists coming in, but also incorporates the community where the fieldwork is being taken place. I also think that the storytelling and the narration and the animation of the documentary was really good. It really painted this whole narrative about Homo Naledi and um, what its life could have been like, what its culture was like, what it looked like. And with that being said, um, that's pretty much all I have to say that I liked about this documentary. So with the good being over, let's get into the bad. What I did not really like about this documentary. So I just want to enunciate to everyone, the general public, scientists in the community, everyone who might not be so aware about the Naledi discovery, that this entire documentary is based off of three papers that have been published by Berger and his team. Three papers which have uh, up until recently not even been peer-reviewed. The way that it works is that Berger and his team publish these papers in a journal that doesn't require immediate peer review to be published. Peer reviews come later and they get attached as an aside to the article. So that means means that Berger's papers were already published and out there about their discoveries, none of this information had been peer reviewed. Which is kind of a huge problem because in science, peer review is kind of like the baseline fundamental of ensuring that articles are not just published willy-nilly with a bunch of spurious data or false claims, can get filtered out and edited through the peer review process. But because that never happened, this is just kind of Berger and his team reporting their findings and doing a lot of hypothesizing and guesswork about what they mean. So now that the peer reviews have actually started filtering in, a lot of the peer reviews from the larger scientific community have mostly rejected a lot of Berger's claims saying that they're unfounded, they're baseless, they're incomplete, they're mostly assumptions. And so it's important to take everything that Berger and his team say in this video with a huge grain of salt because this is all coming from their team. None of it has actually been peer reviewed or really fact checked or cross checked with any other scientist in the larger anthropological community. And honestly, 
this is also what makes me question if this is even really a documentary because throughout this entire documentary no other scientists are asked for their opinion or none of their evidence is cross-checked by any other paleoanthropologist or biological anthropologist in the community it's just Berger and his team recounting their story and so it doesn't really read like a scientific documentary it reads more like a man recounting his story about excavating a cave which is fine if it's just a kind of discovery like documentary but it seems to be kind of positioning itself as a scientific documentary which is a problem because like I said there's very little science actually to be found in this documentary and more storytelling in my opinion. So there are four major claims that Berger and his team make about Naledi in this documentary that I just want to talk about in a bit more detail. So one of the biggest claims that Berger makes is that Homo Naledi was burying or practicing some kind of burial practice in the Denaledi chamber of this rising star cave system. I'm no expert on burials, I'm not an archaeologist, I don't really know much about burial morphology and how skeletons look like when they're buried, but just judging from the images that Netflix decided to post uh, or put in this documentary, that doesn't really look like a burial to me. I don't know, am I just crazy or does that just kind of look like someone hunched in fetal position? That could have happened because of a variety of different things. In a deliberate burial, the body is pretty much intact and protected and that doesn't really seem like that's the case for the burial shown in the documentary. The earliest known human burial was dated to be around 70,000 years ago and the Homo naledi fossils are dated to around 236,000 to 335,000 years ago. So that would push back the earliest known burial by thousands of years. Also throughout the documentary, there are some contradictions, which makes it really hard to believe if anything that they're saying is actually true. For example, they say in the documentary that Naledi could have accessed the cave through another entrance at the beginning of the documentary. But then later on, they say that the way going through this really steep, dark, tiny tunnel that was like 10 meters long is the only way they could have gotten there. So which one was it? Was there another cave entrance that Naledi accessed or was it the one that is currently being used to get down to the Denaledi chamber? Chamber because that changes the story drastically in different ways. Also, it's important to note that caves can actually change over the course of thousands of years due to flowstone remodeling, so an easier passage could have existed at some point. Also, are we really supposed to believe that these hominins with a brain size of approximately an orange or so were able to not only carry these dead bodies, walk into the cave, somehow create artificial light because how else would they get down there if they didn't have any light, crawl down this 10 meter tunnel and deposit and bury the body and crawl back up. It just seems to me like it's very, very implausible. Other scientists have suggested that this could be funeral caching where these bodies are thrown down this pit, which to me seems more likely that Naledi would have gotten into this cave and carried these dead bodies and kind of just like thrown them down a pit because the way that the burial looks like, it does look like bodies could have been thrown down a pit instead of buried. Now let's go on to the very weak claim that Homo Naledi could have used stone tools. Now this is kind of laughable because I think that even in the clip when they're showing the scientist at the synchrotron looking at the stone tool, it doesn't even really seem like he himself actually buys the idea that this weird rock stone tool shaped thing is actually a stone tool. It seems almost as if like Berger is trying to convince him that it is a stone tool. There is really no evidence of this being a stone tool. I mean it's a weird shaped rock. The edge that they show in the documentary could have been a shaping edge but also this has not even been excavated like this is literally from a synchroton scan to put it into perspective homo naledi's brain size is purported to be around 400 to 600 cc's while homo erectus's brain size is purported to be around 950 cc's and finally modern humans brain size is around 1350 cc's we're talking about the fact that homo naledi has half the brain size of a modern human yet is performing these complex supposed rituals, ceremonies, creating stone tools, and doing all of these complex behaviors. Now moving on to the third claim that they make about Homo Naledi. They make a claim that Homo Naledi could have potentially created and um, maintained the usage of fires in these caves. Obviously, if they're going to be existing in this cave system, they're gonna need to find some source of artificial light because it's pitch black in these caves. But there is no real evidence of hearts where fires were made and created, and the ones referenced in the documentary 
documentary just seemed pretty unconvincing. It's kind of just like a pan over. So without actual pictures of these hearts, it's really hard to link this to Homona Lady and claim that this hominin was creating and using fires in these caves. One article by Berger and his team cite that they found burned antelope bones in the cave system, but in the documentary numerous times and in numerous other articles that I read, there were no other faunal remains in the cave system besides Homona Lady. So once again, we have contradicting evidence here. Were there remains of other animals in the cave or were there no other remains besides Naledi? Because if there were, that makes a huge difference to these claims about potentially, you know, cooking antelope or other types of animals in the cave. There has been some preliminary dating of, of the hearts at the caves. And this dating shows that these hearts actually could have occurred thousands of years after the existence of Homo Naledi in these caves. That also kind of just makes it pretty unlikely that Homo Naledi was creating and using fire in these caves. Finally, we have the claim that Homo Naledi was creating art in these caves when Berger points to engravings that he finds in the chamber. Now, these engravings could have been caused by a lot of different things. They could have been left by humans later on. They could have been left by members of the team. There's a lot of other reasons or explanations as to why these engravings exist. Also, the most important fact is that these engravings haven't even been dated, so we don't even know when these engravings occurred. If they occurred around the time that Homo Naledi was, a, you know, existing in the cave, then potentially, yes, that could be evidence that Homo Naledi was making these engravings. But if they appear like thousands of years afterwards or thousands of years before, then it's pretty unlikely that Homo Naledi is to blame for these cave engravings. Also, Berger seems to indicate that this site is the largest site of hominin remains found in history. But he seems to be kind of unaware of Cima de la Huesos in Spain, where more than 60 1600 fossil human remains were found. Overall, it seems like a lot of conjecture with very little evidence to support his claims. So now that we've conquered the bad, let's take a look at the ugly, the peer reviews that have come out. So now that the peer reviews for Berger and his team's papers are finally filtering in, many scientists in the field are saying that his claims are inadequate, incomplete, there's just not enough convincing evidence. And so it seems like the general scientific community is very dubious about these claims and are very, very skeptical. I think most biological anthropologists can agree that the rising star cave system is amazing. We've got all these interesting hominin remains in there supposedly belonging to one species. And there seems to be a lot going on in terms of this cave system and how it was built, how these bones are buried, how there's no kind of cut marks or any trauma on these bones, as well as the supposed presence of of hearts and a supposed burial. There is so much interesting stuff going on there, but I think the right thing to do would have been to wait for the peer reviews to come out and go through a normal, rigorous scientific process for these papers to be published instead of just publicizing the discovery and making a Netflix documentary. This documentary and Berger and his team's work brings to light an important question that we as scientists in the scientific community need to ask ourselves, which is that, is this how science Science should be done. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with brainstorming ideas with fellow peers and kind of just talking out loud about why the remains look like this. Why could it look like a burial, not like something else? Explanations as to why a site looks the way it is. The issue with that is when it goes outside of a scientific community and is broadcast into the public, presenting it like it's almost fact. Personally, I think it's dangerous because it could send the wrong idea out to people and it's already happening. If you look at the comments for the Netflix trailer, on YouTube, a lot of people are kind of buying into this idea that Naledi was this highly intelligent creature that had a t small brain but was able to do all of these things. And at the end of the day, I just don't really think that that's necessarily the right thing to do. I think it would have been better if he revised his claims after the peer reviews came in, gathered more evidence and data to back up what his claims, and then made the documentary. And I also think that the documentary could have been aided by the presence of a lot of other scientists weighing in their opinions so that we left with a more well-rounded view, incorporating all the different perspectives of this discovery and its findings instead of just Berger and his team's narrative. And finally, that brings me to my thoughts and my conclusion about this documentary. So I just want to present you with some of the facts that we know about Naledi uh, based off of the papers that have come out about its discovery. So Naledi seemed to have a mixture of Australopith and human-like features. It had curved fingers for grasping
jumping and moving along trees, but it also had human-like hands and a human-like wrist. And the lady seemed to have a foot similar to humans, but had an Australopithecus-like rib cage and the brain size of around an orange at 450 to 600 cc's. Dental evidence suggests that the lady could have eaten nuts or tubers or more hard foods. And the geology of the site indicates that the fossils were deposited over a period of time as opposed to just one time. So it doesn't look like this was a mass grave. It seems like this cave was used throughout the course of a, a couple uh, years or maybe even thousands of years. The bones itself have no external damage, no cut marks, no teeth marks, no trauma of that sort. And Homo the lady had a pretty small body mass and really only got to around three and a half to four feet tall. So those are the facts. Now, what do I think about this documentary after everything that's come out? All the hype, the press, the controversy, the critiques. My qualm is that does Homo the lady even belong in the genus Homo? The scientific community is largely in disagreement about what constitutes belonging in the genus Homo. Some people disagree with the characteristics used to classify fossils in the genus Homo, but generally members of the genus Homo are characterized by a big brain size, stone tool use, some sort of material culture, walking on two legs obviously, and the use of language to communicate. Now let's take this criteria and apply it to Nalady. Nalady does not have the brain size anywhere near of uh, modern humans, nowhere near as close as even Homo erectus or other hominins in the genus Homo. There's also no real evidence that it used stone tools and it also still has a pretty good mix of primitive Australopithecus-like features. So my question is, do these fossil remains even belong in the genus Homo? Are they actually just a more primitive hominin altogether? To me, this doesn't really scream Homo, this seems like some kind of intermediary, but that's just me. Judging by the pictures of the quote-unquote burials at the site, this could have been more of like a funeral catching situation where maybe these bodies were thrown into this tunnel and that's how they disposed of their dead. It honestly seems pretty unlikely to me that a hominin with the brain size of an orange could carry all these bodies down this tunnel and bury them as well as make fires and create stone tools. It just seems kind of unlikely to me. But what I think is the biggest takeaway is that this story really didn't need to be blown out of proportion like this. This was already so interesting and awesome. The Rising Star cave system is so unique, so different to other cave systems found in the world. We have this huge deposition of these fossil hominin remains. We have, you know, potential engravings, we have potential hearts. It really didn't need to be blown out of proportion. As it stands, the Rising Star cave system and the discoveries brought forth from Berger and his team are already so fascinating. There was really no need to blow this into this this whole kind of storytelling fiasco. I think that if they just publicized the facts and what was known, it would have already been such an interesting find. Overall, I enjoyed the documentary, but I think that everyone who watches it needs to take it with a big grain of salt. Remember that a lot of these claims have not been peer reviewed, they've not been tested by other members of the anthropological community. I applaud Berger and his team so much for their hard work. I think it's so amazing that they made this discovery. I think it's so great that he hired a diverse team of excavators and I think it's so awesome that these fossils are open access. I really, really think that that is the future of science and our field moving forward to make these fossils available to everyone. I'm looking forward to reading Berger's book when it comes out in a month. I just think that some of these claims should have been vetted by the scientific community before they were pushed out to the general public. And I also think the documentary could have done with a lot more scientific evidence and the voices of other members in our community before it was obviously just out for everyone to watch. But enough about me. What did you guys think? Please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys still do check out the documentary because regardless of anything I've said, I still think it's really important for more people to be aware of our evolution and how we evolved and where we evolved. So give it a watch carefully and let me know what you think. But on that note, that's all I have for you guys today and I will see you in my next video.